I uh, got a lot of comments in the last video. People tired of me talking about MMOs that are 10 years away from release. And you know what? I get it. I like learning and talking about these projects, but I understand it can be a bit of a drag, uh, knowing many of them are at least half a decade away. So let's talk about the MMOs coming out right now. Today's video will focus entirely on new MMOs scheduled to launch in 2024. We did a similar one earlier in the year, but since then timelines have shifted, some games got pushed out, others moved up, and we've had a few new surprises as well. So 2024's new MMOs, what are they, when can you play them, and do we expect any of them to be any good, which will probably depend on your definition of good. So, all right, as of this recording, we actually have eight MMOs scheduled to release in 2024. Now, I'm sure we won't actually get all eight of them this year, but this is what's on the docket. And let's start off with the ones that I think have the best chance of actually hitting their target. The one that appears actually most likely to launch the soonest, believe it or not, is Taurus Land. This is the game that notoriously got its start in response to Blizzard pulling World of Warcraft out of China. They said, fine, we'll make our own WoW, and that appears to be per precisely what they have done. Not to say that this is a direct one-for-one -one copy because it's not, but boy, you can certainly see some of the similarities. That aside though, it is a new MMO and it's launching very soon. Just the other week on their official Discord, they posted this announcement. Taurus Land is nearing its official release and pre-registration is available now on the Google Play Store, Apple App Store, and our official website. Now currently, we see an expected launch date listed as June 23rd, although they have said that that is not set in stone it does give us a rough timeline. It is also coincidentally the only actual listed date we have for any of these games on this list. Everything else is pretty much just a target year and target quarter that's listed without any ha having an actual official launch day and month. So yes, Taurus Land does appear like it is the most concrete launch date that we have at the moment. Now in terms of my expectations, well, I've heard okay but not phenomenal things from the early testing. None of the impressions that I've seen have come away super enthused about the game. It does appear to be a fairly by the numbers theme park MMO with the typical offerings. You'll follow a main story quest, level up through different zones, doing dungeons along the way. Dungeons are as you expect them, uh, clear through enemies, fight a boss and collect loot. These come in multiple difficulties. There are 10 person raids, world bosses, daily quests, solo tower climbs, PVP battlegrounds and arenas. Now those are the general content types, but overall, again, I've not heard terribly great things. Unfortunately, it seems like the combat isn't very good. It feels floaty and not that impactful. It very much so looks and feels like a mobile game that's getting ported to PC because, well, that's what it is. I think it's no coincidence that they listed the uh, mobile stores before they listed the website PC version of the game in their announcement. And the game is cross-platform for mobile and PC, so you will be playing with mobile users. And I've heard complaints about this as well, being that they don't communicate very well because they're on a phone and they don't do mechanics either. Pay to win also looks to be a guarantee despite what the developer has said. It's got an energy system tied to crafting. The game uses the typical two currency model with silver rewarded from doing quest achievements, dailies and weeklies and used to buy stuff in the game from vendors. But then there's gold, the currency used solely for buying items from the player auction house. And while there are a few ways to collect gold in the game, you can also buy it from the cash shop and that appears to be the best way. Even from the beta, it appears like the amount of gold that you own will be the have the biggest impact on your overall power progression. They were also selling monthly subscriptions with boost rewards, think along the same lines of what they do in ESO or in Lost Ark, they were selling those in the closed beta test for a beta selling monthly subscriptions. They couldn't even wait to hit us with the microtransactions until the game released. They started in the beta. I mean, look, none of this is surprising or even that unusual from many Eastern MMOs, but it is funny given that early on, Taurus Land was advertising the game by saying very upfront, it's gonna be a non pay to win MMO. That line was in every video description, their socials, website, everywhere, but it is clearly going to very much so be yet another pay to win MMO. But you know what? The game isn't out yet, and I will reserve final judgment until actually playing through and experiencing it myself. But yes, it does seem like we're getting another run-of-the-mill Eastern MMO loaded with progression tied to the cash shop. Not to single out Taurus Land, though, because there's a few games on this list that fill that exact description. But Taurus Land also, from what I've heard, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a particularly good game. But again, I will reserve judgment until 
actually having played it. The next MMO that looks to be almost certainly coming out this year is Once Human. They've been steadily ramping up testing for the game, holding a month-long beta back in December, with another one currently underway, running from now up through middle of May. The game is scheduled to launch in the third quarter of this year, which would put it sometime between July and September. Although this is not a traditional MMORPG, it does check enough of the boxes and is of personal interest to me that I wanted to include it here. This is an open-world third-person looter shooter that caught my attention as it feels like a mix of The Division, Defiance, and Secret Worlds, all games that I personally really enjoyed in the past. You've got an open world with heavy sci-fi theming, full of otherworldly enemies and set pieces, with all of the usual activities found in the genre. You'll go around doing PvE stuff, fighting enemies and bosses, collecting materials and loot. As you explore, you'll stumble across a variety of points of interest and content. There are strongholds, which are like the primary form of PvE activity while you level up. The various set locations all around the map, full of enemies and objectives to clear, and even a fair bit of puzzle and riddle solving mixed in, which beyond the sci-fi theming, this part in particular really reminded me of Secret World. Uh, world events include things like bosses that roam around, there's a spider bus, houses with legs and space whales, there's King of the Hill style horde modes, and then all sorts of uh, events tied to unique locations. There are dungeons called silos, you move through clearing enemies, fighting a boss at the end for loot, and then there are large instance boss fights referred to as monoliths, these are separate from the dungeon bosses, and tend to be more difficult and include several phases with more valuable rewards. Beyond that, the world is full of small camps of enemies, all sorts of points of interest, uh, NPC towns with vendors and side quests. There's also a variety of PvP from points of interest that turn contested, letting you fight other players to entire servers that if you choose to play on will be full on PvP with base attack and defense mechanics as well. And then in addition to all of those MMO and looter shooter things, the game also has a lot of survival elements like stamina, sanity, hydration, and hunger meters to maintain and full on base building with as much variety as any survival game. And these bases can be built pretty much anywhere except for roads and right near points of interest. You're going to see player built bases all over the place in the open world. The game's also got plenty of progression available. Besides the leveling up, you've got crafting of gear and mods along with blueprints or cradle and deviations that provide all sorts of perks and special powers. And it's in a few of these crafting and progression systems where the possibility of future pay to win seems like it might exist. Although it's currently not in the beta version of the game, it could make its way at some point and launch or sometime after release. The possibility is there, especially with the huge number of currencies and resources in the game that gate power pr progression. Although the developer has very adamantly said on many occasions there will be no pay to win, that might also depend on their definition of the term. It is certainly the case where they could at a moment's notice swap over. Uh, anytime I play a game that decides to have like 50 different currencies in it tied to all sorts of different activities and progression and thousands and thousands of menus for you to click through to uh, obtain those currencies, uh, that sets off alarm bells almost immediately. I mean, there's even already in-game gotcha mechanics that are tied to the highest rarity blueprints. So yeah, we will see what happens if pay to win in any variation ever comes into Once Human. I do quite like the video game portion of the game though. Like Once Human is fun to play. It's filled with interesting content and that's why I have been playing it. Once more, yes, a current round of beta testing is taking place. It started on April 5th and is said to be running right up through the middle of May, a little over a month long. There do appear to be plenty of opportunities to get in if you're interested in checking it out for yourself. And the full release version is scheduled for the third quarter in 2024. Next up, we have got Throne and Liberty. So this one also seems certain to release this year. We're just not exactly sure as of yet when, but it is already out in Korea as of last December and the global launch is planned for some point this year. So closed beta testing of the global version is actually starting this week. It's going to be fairly brief beginning on Wednesday, April 14th and lasting until the 17th. This is a confidential test and will be under NDA, so don't expect to see any streams or videos. But again, the game has already launched in Korea and we're not expecting a whole lot to change beyond localization and maybe a few minor adjustments. The content should pretty much be exactly the same. So Throne and Liberty is a more traditional theme park MMO. It's got a massive seamless open world with no loading screens and tons of players. I have seen clips with easily one to 200 people in a single area. There's diverse and varied terrain to explore with traversal mechanics that really reward that exploration. You've got the ability to glide, a grapple hook, and mantling onto most of the terrain. There's the typical assortment of MMO quests and activities, open world public events for both PvE and PvP, a few varieties of dungeons, including open world dungeons that can house any number of players, and traditional instant dungeons for groups of up to six. There are 15 field bosses located throughout the open world, solo boss tower climbs, there's open world PvP where certain zones become flagged over time, a big 
focus on guild play in this as well. It's pretty much required actually for much of the higher tier content in both PVE and PVP and all, plenty of progression systems and reward tracks from leveling and gear enchanting, a battle pass and codex system, login rewards and those guild rewards. There's a lot of different things to work towards and spend your time doing. Now, as mentioned, the Korean version of the game launched last December and was met with pretty much the reception we expected. The game itself seems good. The combat has improved and it's got a lot of interesting and varied content to do, but also it is super pay to win. Well, surprise, surprise, deja vu here. Uh, there are some parts of the progression that can't be swiped for, but many of them can. Like most free to play MMOs, Throne in Liberty does have two currencies, the Solent, the earned in game currency, and then Lucent, the purchased one with real money. Now Lucent can technically be farmed in game by not spending in the sense that you can find items and then post them on the auction house in exchange for Lucent that other players purchase. However, you get Lucent though, you'll be able to purchase nearly everything in the game with it. And that is where the pay to win comes in. The two main things that people want to buy with the premium currency is the base level versions of gear, but more importantly, the materials used to upgrade and enhance that gear, including even being able to purchase the in-game currency Solent by breaking down items that you purchase with Lucent. As of today, it seems like even the biggest, most ardent fans of Throne of Liberty in Korea admit that it is without a doubt a very pay to win game, but they still enjoy it despite it, which is a growing trend in the genre with but a rare few exceptions. Personally, I am looking forward to the content and playing the game, spending time exploring the world, checking out everything it has to offer, but unless drastic changes are made, I suspect I will be leaving before not too long once my gear progression being gated behind either weeks or uh, weeks of grinding or seconds worth of swiping, that is when I am most certainly likely to check out. Throwing Liberty Global does appear to be on track for release sometime later this year. The next game on the list might not meet many of your qualifications for an MMO, but the developer themselves are calling it one. I'm talking about Dune Awakening. This is described as an open world survival sandbox MMO. Developed by Funcom, who have said that they're looking to take the past 20 years of experience in both of these genres and bring them together. There will be a heavy survival focus, the usual loop of starting with nothing, venturing out, gathering basic resources to craft basic tools to build basic crafting stations that let you progress to the next tier to gather better resources and make better tools for better stations, so on and so on. There's base building with all the usual offerings. They've taken the foundation of their prior game, Conan Exiles, and added and expanded upon it. There's even vehicle construction. In fact, vehicles are going to play a fairly large role in the game as you have to use them to traverse the sands and avoid other players as well as the sandworms. As per the Dune universe, sandworms are a constant threat and have been implemented to act as a tension mechanic, forcing players to think about their actions for fear of drawing their attention. If you make too much noise, if you move too much across the sand, if you drive large vehicles for too long, the worms will inevitably arrive and you can't defeat them. You must only run from them. Combat itself will be in third person. It's an action shooter game. You'll pick from a wide array of crafted weapons, gadgets, vehicles, gear, and abilities from the different great schools of the Imperium, which are basically your class selection. This will be tied into progression, leveling your character, unlocking new abilities for the different classes as you progress. As for the MMO elements, for one, they have said servers will support thousands of players simultaneously and features an end game that centers around large scale combat, what they are calling combined arms with groups of players split into factions fighting for resources in all out ground and air warfare. From what they have shown and said, this does appear to be similar to the sort of experience you get from Battlefield or Planetside style of large scale combat. There are also NPC bases called outposts for you to scout, infiltrate, and clear. World events like ships falling from the sky full of valuable resources to be scavenged or large military vessels that scan the planet at night that you have to avoid. Beyond various camps and other points of interest, you also have straight up dungeons in the game called Echo Labs, full of enemies and bosses. Sometimes you'll even find interesting experiments, puzzles, and obstacles to overcome. The world will be divided into sections with safe and hostile regions. In those hostile areas, you'll find the most valuable resources and loot, but also there is full on PVP, which includes friendly fire. And then there are some specific areas of the game that are subject to what are called the shifting sands mechanic, where once a week sandstorms roll through and completely change the landscape, wiping out player outposts, revealing new points of interest and resource locations. This is actually a really cool sounding feature. I do quite like what we've learned about Dune Awakening so far, although I do want to mention there has as of yet been no public NDA free testing, so I have not seen or read any first 
on impressions. That said, they are targeting a 2024 early access release and it does seem like they're on track. In fact, a few weeks ago, I got a hands-off presentation and what I saw looked pretty good. Now it was hands-off, which it means I wasn't playing the game. I've not played the game, but I did see gameplay. I saw the game running in action and I did like what I saw, but Again, it's not quite the same as playing yourself, so we have to wait until that actually happens. Some cool ideas here, though. I like the concept, and I am looking forward to checking it out. Also, this is one of the few MMOs launching this year that doesn't appear primed to be full of pay-to-win on its release, which makes it a bit of a standout, which is also pretty sad in it. <laughs> uh, beta signups are available now. Testing is expected to start in the coming months. And again, the early access release is scheduled for later this year. All right, next up, we've got PAX Day. So this one is claiming for an early access release in the spring, which in order for them to hit would have to be within the next few months here. Uh, this is an open world survival sandbox MMO with a massive focus on community. In fact, every building in the game will be player built. The economy will be entirely player run. There aren't even traditional MMO uh, NPCs or quest givers in the game. There are enemies to fight and such, but there aren't NPCs that you chat with to learn about the lore or to do quests for. None of that. This is a game that leans very heavily into the sandbox camp of the genre. Now, part of the reason I'm uncertain about this launch here is that the last test they held in November was pretty bare bones with just the fundamentals of gathering, crafting, base building, and very basic combat. The game just didn't seem anywhere near complete enough for even an early access launch. That that said though, it was intentionally limited. That was the point. Specifically, it was designed to test those elements. And in the five months since then, they have seemingly made some good advances. So maybe they do very well launch into early access soon in the spring as they are projecting. In fact, a recent posted a little breakdown of what they've worked on in the time since the last alpha. They've revamped their RPG and stat systems from different types of damage to the introduction of durability mechanics. They've also enhanced the depth and complexity of gameplay with spells, special attacks, attacks and procs added to the game. They've enhanced animations as well for weapons to try to ensure combat feels more impactful. They've improved targeting for both melee and range and done some general balancing for items and enemy stats, durability, crafting, and more. Also, there is a second alpha test happening in a couple of weeks starting on April the 23rd. Whereas the first alpha focused on gathering and crafting and building, this one is focused on the gameplay experience, namely combat and PVP. In alpha two, we can expect to see a combat revamp vamp with smarter and more formidable enemies, improved targeting and spell mechanics, combat should be more engaging in this build. They've done world enhancements from lighting and biome transitions to cave exploration. These improvements should enhance the overall atmosphere and immersion of the game, they've said. There's the player versus player as they've introduced a full completely PVP zone. And there's also expansions to crafting with new crafting stations, additional resources and magical materials, along with expanded crafting options and recipes. Now the developer has said they plan to to continuously improve the game leading into its early access release, which again is slated to happen this spring. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen, depending on what sort of feedback they get from this second alpha test. Registration for alpha two is still currently open. You can sign up on their website with the testing beginning on April 23rd. Okay, so those five games I think are the most likely to actually come out this year, uh, which is why I went into a bit more depth and detail when discussing them. The next three are also targeting a 2024 release. Uh, I'm just way less certain about them. We're talking about Blue Protocol, Project LLL, and Core Punk. So yes, Blue Protocol is scheduled for 2024, but here's the thing. The global version of this game is being published by Amazon, who are also publishing Throne and Liberty. Now at the moment, it seems like Throne and Liberty is their priority. They have been pushing it way more on social media and advertising. They've been actively announcing closed beta testing, whereas I've not heard a peep from Amazon about Blue Protocol in months. Nothing at all. In fact, their last uh, activity on the official Twitter account was in August 2023, and since then, it has been just nothing. Absolute crickets. Now, since they're publishing both of these games and they're both MMOs, we do expect there to be a bit of a gap between the two so that they're not competing with themselves for a player base. And since as of yet, we don't have an exact release date for Throne in Liberty, and I expect them to at least have a couple of months of runway after announcing that, unless Throne in Liberty comes out like late summer, early fall, I I'm really not sure that Blue Protocol is gonna make it out in this calendar year. But who knows, this could all change 
launch tomorrow, Amazon could all of a sudden come out and announce we're going to be launching Throne of Liberty in June or August, and then that would give them enough time for Blue Protocol to come out in the fall. Like, that could happen. As of now, it hasn't. And again, it looks like they're giving priority to Throne of Liberty, and Blue Protocol, once again, is being put on the back burner. But we will see what happens. Anything could change. Project LLL is also targeting a launch in 2024, but when it comes to this game, they've just been so tight-lipped, it's really hard for me to judge. Uh, other than the gameplay presentation during last year's G-Star event, we, I've not seen or heard any updates for this game. Sort of like Once Human, this is going to be an open world looter shooter with some interesting looking ideas. And we have done a couple of videos going in a bit more detail about it if you want to figure out those specifics. But in general, I'm pretty in the dark with this one. I have not seen any info or details about beta testing taking place. I've not seen any hands-on impressions. I've not even seen any leaks come out. And that happens for basically any game that is getting actively tested. You will see leaks on on online for people who just don't care about the NDAs. They will talk about them, even if it's behind anonymous accounts and vaguely. None of that has happened for Project LLL from what I've seen so far. So for that reason, it is very up in the air for me. Like it could come out this year. I am just, I've got no way to judge whether or not it's on progress or the likelihood of that happening, but it, it could happen. It's possible. And then there is Core Punk, a game that I am really rooting for, for, but still seems to have a very long road ahead of it. With development having slowed in recent years, years and the last alpha test showing that they still seem to have a ways to go. Uh, but they have been receptive to feedback. It does appear like they are implementing good changes based on that feedback. And there's another alpha plan for later this month. And here we'll get to see uh, those recently made changes in action. And I am hoping for the best. I'm hoping for good progress. I'm hoping for improvements because I do still love the idea of an MMO that plays like a MOBA. And I think it has potential. I do think Core Punk has potential. But as far as it getting a full release in 2024, that just still seems seems unlikely to me unless there are significantly, unless there's just like significantly more game behind the curtain that they haven't shown revealed at all. But yes, I'm rooting for them. I like the idea of Core Punk. I do think there's some cool things about what they've shown and what I've played. Still think it needs a bit more time. All right. So as of now, those are the eight MMOs with launches that are said to be happening this year the first half of which I think seem like the most likely. Beyond that, there is a long, long list of other games that aren't coming until 2025 and beyond. Some of which, though, will be getting testing this year. Alpha and beta testing is expected to happen or currently happening. There's Soul Frame, which we might be getting some test of this year. They've said on several occasions that they plan to begin publicly testing the game fairly early on in the process, even earlier than what they did with Warframe all the way back in 2013. Of course, Ashes of Creation is still trucking along. This game gets regular updates, but it is still in alpha testing with the alpha two testing planned to begin in quarter three of this year. So a full launch is most certainly not happening. Quinfall supposedly exists and is running tests right now. We'll see how that one pans out. And then there's all the other games. You know, we got like Chrono Odyssey, Arc Age 2, Project Ragnarok, Into the Echo, and a handful of others that are in development coming out at some point, but don't look to be anywhere near release. And then we've got those games that I've been talking about for what feels like like a decade, uh, Pantheon and Camelot Unchained. I just don't have much to say about those two games and it's really unfortunate for what started out all those years ago as promising projects and ideas, just where they are today uh, doesn't any longer feel all that promising. And then beyond all this, uh, we cannot of course forget while these are the new MMOs that are coming out this year and on the horizon, we have all the big ones that are getting expansions. Final Fantasy XIV has its Dawn Trail expansion coming out, I believe in the summer. World of Warcraft has the War Within expansion, either planned for late summer or early fall. Of course, WoW Classic is happening, Season of Discovery is trucking along. There's a brand new uh, yearly update, chapter update for Elder Scrolls Online. Guild Wars 2 has another expansion planned and I'm sure many of the other other existing popular uh, MMOs have updates, but those are the ones that I at least personally am paying attention to. And yeah, that is uh, just about it. That's really what I want. I really wanted to just focus on the new MMOs, the actual new games that are coming out this year or could be coming out this year. And as a quick recap, the ones that seem likely to actually launch in 2024 are Tarisland, Once Human, Throne in Liberty, Dune Awakening, and Pax Day. And the ones that are scheduled, but I'm not so sure about, include Blue Protocol, Project LLL, and Core Punk, with the whole other rest of the list being at some point in the future. But there you go. If you are sick and tired of me talking about games that are five to 10 years away from actually coming out, here are some of the new MMOs that are coming out very soon. Hopefully, maybe. We'll see. This genre is quite a bit of a mess. That's going to do it for today, though. Thank you, as always, for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the vid, and I'll see you next time, right? Take it easy.